What's up, mission kids and friends? I'm not sure if you saw last week's episode, but no. we had a guest at our block party who I did not expect. Apparently, he had a great time. Oh, 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 hey everybody, look who is showing up to our block party today. so glad you're all here at Mission Kids. We're having the best Incredible. block party the world has ever seen. I think this party has really grown our friendship as well. Hey, speaking of friendship, that's our virtue that we've been talking about all month long here at Mission Kids. Friendship is using your words and your actions to show others you care. It's hard to know what the day is gonna bring Some days you feel like you can fly Some days we have broken wings But with you by my side I'll always be okay You always shine Here's our bottom line. The one thing I want you to remember from today's episode. Our bottom line goes like this. Friends forgive one another. Ah, let's say that together again. Are you ready? Here we go. Friends forgive one another. And that is our bottom line for today. In God's big story, which we call the Bible, God talks about friendship. 
Today we go to the Bible in the book of John. Now this story is about Jesus and his buddy Peter. Now Jesus and Peter were really good friends. In fact, Peter was one of Jesus' 12 disciples. But unfortunately, something happened that could have been a problem in their friendship. And this is where we pick up today's Bible story. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Peter hauled in the knotted net yet again as the first light of dawn gleamed in the eastern sky. Empty. Not a single fish all night. Thomas shook his head. Uh, I doubt we'll catch a thing before it's time to take the boat in. John studied Peter thoughtfully. Peter, you didn't really want to catch fish anyway, did you? You just wanted to get out in the boat and do something normal. Peter shrugged, but he knew John was right. Over the past few weeks and months, everything in his life had turned upside down. First, Peter had shown the courage to speak the truth about his friend Jesus. You are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. Many people wanted to make Jesus king, even though the religious leaders hated him. The day before Jesus was killed, Peter had promised Jesus that he would follow him anywhere and even give up his life for Jesus. But that very evening, Jesus was arrested. Peter was so scared, he told three different people he wasn't Jesus' friend. I don't know that man. Peter felt sick about what he'd done, especially when Jesus was nailed to the cross and died. But then he returned to life. He appeared to his friends. It was amazing, incredible. Everyone was excited beyond belief. Except Peter must have wondered. Is Jesus mad at me? Am I still his friend? Does he still love me? Now Peter found himself in the boat, trying to figure it all out. His fingers tightened on the wet rope as he prepared to cast the net one more time. As he glanced over on the shoreline, he saw a figure standing there. Friends, don't you have any fish? Nope, not one. Throw your net on the right side of the boat. There you will find some fish. The seven disciples in the boat exchanged glances as Thomas laughed. I seriously doubt it. You guys have anything better to do? Let's give it a try. Together, the men heaved the heavy wet net back into the sea on the other side. Hey, I think we've got something. Bring it on in. There's one fish. Two fish. A red fish. A blue fish. And another one. And another uh, ten. Whoa! Need some help here. The net was so full of fish, they couldn't haul it into the boat. They began towing it to shore. John gaped at the man still standing on the beach. It's the Lord. Excitement raced through Peter's veins. He was about to see Jesus again. But just as quickly, guilt gnawed at his stomach. Facing Jesus meant he had to face how he denied knowing Jesus. But it's Jesus. I've got to see him no matter what. Grabbing his coat, Peter jumped out of the boat and into the water. He half ran and half waded to the beach when he discovered that Jesus started a small bonfire. Fish and bread were already toasting over the flames. He's God's son and he's making breakfast for us. Jesus smiled at Peter. Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Uh, yes, Lord. Peter ran back to the lapping water to help his friends haul their fish to shore. 153. You counted? Don't doubt it. Jesus gestured to the disciples to join him around the fire. Come and have breakfast. As the disciples gathered, Jesus offered them bread to eat. John whispered to Peter. This is what he did when we last ate together at the Passover meal. When breakfast finished, the disciples rose to take care of their fish. Peter found himself walking beside Jesus. There were so many things he wanted to say, but he couldn't find the words. Simon Peter. Do you really love me more than these others do? Peter swallowed hard. Surely Jesus knew what he felt. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs. Peter remembered how Jesus would compare people to sheep in his stories. Peter, do you really love me? Lord, you know that I love you. 
take care of my sheep. Sheep? People. Peter waited in his mind. Jesus must be telling Peter to take care of the people who had followed him. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep. Just as Peter denied knowing Jesus three times, he now confirmed three times that he loved Jesus. What's more, Jesus wanted Peter to go out and share that love with others. He's forgiven me, even after what I did. Peter, things are going to get even more difficult for you. You are going to be led places you do not want to go. Peter slowly nodded his head. He was willing to do anything Jesus asked of him. Follow me. Yes, Lord, I will. Because Jesus had forgiven him, Peter was now free to share the love of God with those around him without carrying around a heavy load of guilt. This month's memory verse is found in Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17, and goes like this. A friend loves at all times. They are there to help when trouble comes. Now, if you've been here the past few weeks, you might remember this verse. If this is your first week, that's okay. This is an amazing verse about friendship. Now, how well do you remember this month's verse? We're going to play a game in just a minute where you will have to fill in the blanks, fill in the missing words from this month's memory verse. Are you ready? It's found in Proverbs 17, 17. Here we go. As we wrap up today's Bible story, raise your hand if a friend has ever done something that hurt your feelings. <laughs> All right, put your hands down. Now, raise your hand if you've ever been the one to hurt your friend's feelings. <laughs> All right. We don't always mean to, but unfortunately, we can hurt the people who are closest to us. We might say something that we wish we hadn't said. Oops. We might think about what we want instead of thinking about what our friend might need. In any relationship, in any friendship, there are lots of ways that our hearts can get hurt. Forgiveness is an important part of friendship. There will be times that we mess up and hurt each other's feelings, yeah. but friends don't hold those things against each other. Friends are quick to say, I'm sorry, and friends forgive one another. In our family talk time in just a moment, discuss as a family this question. How do you react when a friend hurts you? Do you immediately try and get back at them? Do you freeze them out and ignore them? Or do you try to work through it with them and see if it's a friendship worth working on? So go ahead, pause the video, discuss this question with your family, then come back and press play. pray and ask God to help us be ready to forgive. Will you pray with me? God, it's amazing to see how Jesus forgave Peter. Peter must have felt so bad that he said he didn't even know Jesus. But then he must have felt so good when Jesus told him everything was okay. Please help us to be friends who forgive like Jesus did. Help us to forgive others when they've hurt our feelings. 
and help us to be brave enough to say we're sorry too. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Next weekend is going to be amazing yeah, and baby. the best. Now, if you don't know what's happening, tell your parents to check out our Mission Kids Facebook page for more detailed info about what's coming next yes. Sunday. Mission Kids is so excited to be moving back inside to our Mission Kids environment. And it all starts next Sunday. So make sure you get more detailed information on our Mission Kids yes. Facebook page about that. Until next weekend, my friends, I want you to remember this week that friends forgive one another. Let's work on forgiving each other okay. no matter what. Hey, until next weekend, I hope you have a fantastic week. And remember, friends, forgive one another. Until next time, you're the best. See you later.